My name is Nick Vavis. I'm setting out on a journey through the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. My goal? To visit eight parishes in one day and show you why we live in a city of churches. Hello everyone and welcome to City of Churches. I'm about to start out on a day-long journey through the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens and I'm inviting you to come along. My first stop is St. James Cathedral in downtown Brooklyn. My pilgrimage starts here in Windsor Terrace, a largely residential and diverse neighborhood in Brooklyn. It's bounded by Prospect Park and the Greenwood Cemetery, which is a National Historic Landmark. With its historic buildings, restaurants, bars and shops, as well as close access to the Brooklyn Museum, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden and the Central Library, Windsor Terrace is home to a diverse group of Irish, Italian and Latino families. To get to St. James, I'll be taking the F train. It's a relatively short ride, about 15 minutes to J Street Borough Hall. And from there, just a five minute walk to the church. I can't believe I got a seat. It's not too cozy, but it beats standing. Now the F train runs all the way from Jamaica, Queens to Coney Island here in Brooklyn. The F train can trace its origin back to 1875 and the original Culver Line, which ran from the Greenwood Cemetery to Coney Island. The F train as we know it officially began in 1940. The train's running in Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan. And uh, this is our stop. Well, here we are. And I think St. James is down that way. Yep, I can see it from here. Come on. We made it to St. James. Let's take a look at this. Oh, this commemorates when Pope John Paul II made his visit here in 1979. Now, as you know, Pope Benedict made a visit to New York recently. He didn't quite make it to St. James, but Maybe next time. Come on, let's go inside. Monsignor, this is beautiful. Oh, well, so welcome. the first thing that catches my eye mm -hmm. is this altar. It's splendid. Well, the whole, the whole idea is that the eye of the person entering uh -huh. is focused right to the altar. And so maybe that's a good place to start for our tour. Oh, that'd be great. Well, Nick, this uh, structure here goes back to 1853. Mm -hmm. But actually, there was a parish here from 1822. It was the first parish on all of Long Island. From so it's here. the oldest parish on Long Island. That's exactly. Not right. the church. Not, not the, the church. church. No, no, no. Okay. There were a couple of other structures before that that were, you might say, temporary and then uh, just uh, either burnt down or just were. And uh, the altar itself dates back how long? How new or old oh, is Oh, that, that altar. altar. Well, that altar goes back to the renovations that took place after the Second Vatican Council. Okay. So sometime in the 70s. But the basic structure of the church itself mm -hmm. uh, is 1853. And in 1853, it also became the cathedral, because at that time, the Diocese of Brooklyn was established. So uh, this then was designated as, as the cathedral. So it's been a very important church for mm -hmm. all of Long Island. The Bal what we call the Baltacino, these four columns with the dome. With the over, dome is yes, the Baltacino. Baltacino, oh. right. And that uh, was part of the original church. Uh, the location of the altar where it is now, mm -hmm. that came as a result of the Second Vatican Council. And you'll notice on top of the Baldacchino, there are the four inscription. words there, yes. What is that? In finem delexit eos, he loved them to the very end. He loved it, them to the very end. It's taken from the Gospel according to St. John, mm -hmm. and it describes Jesus at the Last Supper, that he loved his disciples to the very, to the very end. end. And that's when he gave them then uh, his body and blood in the sacrament of the Eucharist. And that's what we celebrate there then on that altar. 
So you'll see that uh, behind the altar there's a chair, mm -hmm. and that is where uh, myself or other priests who celebrate Mass here, mm -hmm. that's where we would preside from. Okay. But to my left here is the chair of the bishop. The bishop's chair. See, a cathedral is the bishop's church. It okay. belongs to the bishop in a special way. And, and, and in that sense then, it becomes the mother church mm -hmm. for the diocese. Right now, okay. the Diocese of Brooklyn compose, is composed of the counties of Brooklyn and Queens. Mm -hmm. At one time, it was all of Long Island, including Nassau and Suffolk, but now it's just Brooklyn and Queens. So is Long Island considered, oh, is this considered Long Island Yes, then? oh yes, downtown Brooklyn, where, where we are, is Long the beginning Island. of Long it's Island. the beginning of Long Island. <laughs> yes, okay. and then stretches out to Montauk Point. Okay. Uh, Nassau and Suffolk now are a new diocese, uh, rock, well, not 50 years old, mm -hmm. at Rockville Center. But here, uh, Brooklyn and Queens are the diocese of Brooklyn, and the bishop presides here mm -hmm. on significant occasions. So only he sits in that chair? Only he I sits in it. that chair. In fact, yeah. that chair has a technical name from the Latin, cathedra, C-A-T-H-E-D-R-A, yeah, -E which is the root of the word cathedral. Okay. And that word means chair. It's the bishop's chair. So when he comes here, he presides from that, from chair. that chair. Only he can. And he's the from, only one. That's right. Yeah, as the bishop. Of and so all of this, the detail and the mm -hmm. gilding, and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful, um, uh, the decorative parts of mm -hmm. the inside and yes. the dome. It's, is this all original, or has this been renovated? Is this, this new? This, this was. Uh, there, there were several uh, times when this church has been renovated since mm -hmm. the 1970s, and so after Vatican II, there had to be. The altar had to face the people. The altar rail was removed, and so, and then the decoration was done at ver in various stages. So, uh, as a result, uh, we we have uh, uh, this very beautiful sanctuary here. There are occasions when this church is filled to capacity, standing room only, mm -hmm. when the bishop presides uh, here uh, for special occasions. For example, the ordination of priests. Okay. Almost all of the priests uh, of the diocese of Brooklyn were ordained here in this church going back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it has, a, it's, has a lot of, you might say, significance for mm -hmm. the diocese. Every major anniversary uh, of some religious order or school, uh, a lot of times they'll celebrate here. It takes place here? Yeah, and the bishop will be here or one of the auxiliary bishops. Okay. Uh, the bishop has several assistant bishops and mm -hmm. they'll come and they'll celebrate. So uh, it's, it, there are times when when this is quite, quite you might say, quite joyful in its celebration. Well, I'd love to take a look at some of the um, areas in the side altars, yes, if we could. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's you go can show here me those. That'd the, be great. Yeah, Near the, the pulpit. Right. The pulpit is where the uh, gospel is proclaimed from, where the preaching is done. So mm -hmm. the bishop frequently will preach from there, uh, or the priest who's presiding will preach from there. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes uh, the bishop will choose to preach at his chair, which is a symbol of his teaching responsibility. Okay. But ordinarily, priests will preach from here and then return to the altar for the rest of the celebration of the Eucharist. Now there is a, I'm not sure what to call this, but there's a pole that I'm looking at with bells. Can oh yes. explain that mm -hmm. to me? What that, is that? That's called, in the technical term, is a tintinabulum. Tintinabulum. <laughs> I knew it wasn't pole with bells. So <laughs> tintinabulum. Yeah, okay. and it's a symbol of a basilica. This church was designated a basilica in 1982. Uh, that it, the designation of a basilica comes from Rome, Mm -hmm. And it's on the basis of a particular church being architecturally, historically, and liturgically significant. So, of course, you see the beauty of the architecture mm -hmm. of this structure. Historically, it's, it's, uh, its origins going back to 1822. And liturgically, it's a place where we hope liturgy is conducted uh, appropriately, correctly, properly, and beautifully. And only Rome can decree that. Only Rome can to decree be, that. To be made to yeah. a basilica. Right, it's a minor basilica. A minor basilica. Because the major basilicas are in Rome. So for example, okay. St. Peter's, St. Paul outside the walls, those are major basilicas. This is a minor basilica. Okay. There aren't not too, there are not too many around the world. Uh, are the bells themselves, is there a purpose for the bells? Do they ring at a certain time? No, is there they, it's, it's more decorative, and, and, it's no, decorative. It's decorative and symbolic of, of the particular honor that this church has okay. as a basilica. Uh, another thing I noticed, Monsignor, is in the stained glass, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a symbol or there's mm -hmm. uh, an inscription, 1854 to 1904. Mm -hmm. right. What does that indicate? Well, uh, this, is a, this window depicts the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and that was defined as a dogma of the church in 1854. Mm -hmm. And so the parishioners 
in order to celebrate the 50th anniversary of it in 1904, right. had this window um, made, produced, and installed here. So again, this window, as all the other windows, came from Germany and uh, early uh, 20th century, and it depicts that uh, very important occasion in the life of the church. Is that the same date that they were all commissioned? Yes, or all, all, the, all the, yeah, they're all, they're all the same, same thing. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that we felt a rumbling. What's happening with oh, us? <laughs> <laughs> we're surrounded that? by subways. Uh, Does that run under, underneath the church? Yes, no, not run underneath the church, but behind us. Oh, okay. Uh, on Flatbush Avenue, there are subways, and then in front of us on J Street, there are subways also. So, so when you're delivering mass, you kind of just roll it. Yeah, you just you just know <laughs> that, that that's part of it. Ordinarily, you don't notice it; you get used to it. Okay. Uh, but when someone is here for the first time, they they can hear it. Can we? I want to take a look at the other side of the yes, altar. There were absolutely. some things over there. Right, absolutely. Caught my eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can hear the tingling of the uh, vibrations. You know, the, when the when the yeah. subways go by. What you're seeing here, Nick, is, is an umbrellino. Umbrellino. Which, which means a little umbrella, literally. It's an Italian word for an umbrella. Mm -hmm. And that's the second symbol of a basilica. And the interesting thing is that it was uh, John Paul II who mm -hmm. was the one who designated this church, this cathedral, as a basilica. And uh, so it has a special connection to John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Now, John Paul II was never inside this church but he was outside. He was outside the church. He was coming <laughs> back. He was coming. He was coming back from New York, from Manhattan. Okay. And they were coming down the street here, and people knew he would be coming down J Street. Okay. And so they gathered outside, and among the people there were uh, was a group of Polish children dressed in in Polish costumes, Polish folklore costumes, folk, folkloristic okay. costumes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so he saw to them, <laughs> he want, and he, yes, and he wanted the motorcade to stop. <laughs> and, and so it did, because originally it was not going to stop. Uh -huh. And it was also pouring rain. But the motorcade stopped and he came out of the car. Needless to say, some of the security people were a little upset. <laughs> but yeah. the Pope is the so Pope. So that was the papal so visit. That was the papal visit. So <laughs> no time to prepare. No, no, it's commemorated out there. Yeah. And, but it was a spontaneous uh, occasion. Okay. And, uh, but anyway, so it, but it's wonderful that... Uh, uh, in a sense, he reinforced his link to oh, the sure. church. That so, was in 1979. Uh, and then you'll notice next to it there is a portrait of St. Paul. Actually, that's oh, a, a okay. hand-painted copy of uh, an El Greco painting from mm -hmm. around 1600. And this is the year of St. Paul. And so this painting is ordinarily kept in the rectory, which is behind the church here. But we brought it out here for this for year. For the year of St. Paul. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. because this church has been designated by the bishop as a pilgrimage site for the year of St. Paul. And a little bit further here is the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. Mm -hmm. And this is where the Blessed Sacrament is reserved. And so, for example, if someone, if a parishioner is sick, we would take the Blessed Sacrament to that parishioner from this tabernacle here. You'll notice on the top, that the is... The dome? Yes, that's mm -hmm. a reproduction of the front of the cathedral. Oh, okay. So it kind of emphasizes uh, that the church itself is the dwelling place of God, that this is where we encounter uh, God through our worship and our prayer. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice also that uh, on the walls and above us... The Star of David. Star of David, that, yes, yes, and yeah, exactly. And, and uh, that shows our roots in the Jewish tradition. Christianity came out of Judaism. And Jesus, of course, himself was called the Star of David because he was descended from mm -hmm. the house of David. So uh, it's a wonderful... Uh, uh, symbol of the connectedness between Christianity and Judaism. Well, I also noticed there's a piece left over of yes. the, um, mm -hmm. the altar rail. And that's, that's from the original altar rail that extended the entire length of the sanctuary here. Is and that used for prayer? Was yeah, people used? come here before Mass, for example, come mm -hmm. here and kneel and pray. So uh, it's, it's a connection to the it's church before it, was, before it was uh, re renovated after, after Vatican II. And then on the wall here we right. have the mm -hmm. station. Right. Th those are the. Cross. That's the. This is the. What's the first station? The first station. Of fourteen stations, okay. and each station depicts a phase in the uh, Passion of Christ, and then mm -hmm. His crucifixion and burial. And you'll notice the the very lovely pastels that uh, give life to to the oh, stations. But they extend seven on this side of the church, and then seven on the other side. 
There were some um, some glass vases or jars over here with the oils oh, yes. in them. I'd like to take a That's look at that. That's extremely important. That extremely me. important. That'd be great. Well, Nick, these are the holy oils mm -hmm. that are blessed by the bishop on Holy Thursday morning. That's when we celebrate the priesthood of Jesus Christ and the priesthood of all those ordained as, the, as, as priests and bishops. Mm -hmm. And these are the oils that we would use in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, that the bishop would use mm -hmm. in the ordination of priests. How are they each different? So what you have, we have the oil of uh, catechumens, which is used for those who are going to be baptized. Okay. We have the oil of the sick, which is used for the anointing of the sick, and then holy chrism, which is a scented oil, and that's used for confirmation, ordination of, of uh, priests and bishops. And since this is the cathedral church, the mother church of the diocese, mm -hmm. the bishop blesses these oils that are then distributed to every parish. Usually what happens okay. on Holy Thursday morning, all mm -hmm. the priests come here. Will come here. Yes, and many people do also. And then so, what's the mm -hmm. process, or is there a ceremony in yes. which they're Right, after the delivered. homily, after mm -hmm. the homily, the, then these three oils are blessed. There's, there are separate prayers for each of the oils. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then much song, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then the oils are uh, taken by the parishes. Mm -hmm. They're already prepared in, they are. in bottles. That they and then they're take. distributed right. to all the priests. Yes, and then if during the year they run out of any of these oils, they come here and they get replenished. Where, um, where does the oil come from? It's, it's basically it's olive, it oil. olive oil. Yeah, it's a high quality olive oil. And then there's a perfumed essence that's mm -hmm. added to the, uh, to the chrism. The, the essence, the perfu perfumed essence is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know that it's you might say it's the the perfume of holiness you know, that should be spread you know to a fragrance a fragrance that should be spread to many people. This was done in ancient times. The blessing of oils. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that that that's a, and it's true. It's found not only in the Roman Catholic Church but also in the Orthodox churches. Mm -hmm. It's a tradition that is long-standing. So from the inception of this church, mm -hmm. has this been going on oh, since yes, yes, the very mm -hmm. beginning? Yes, oh, yeah. What was the parish like then? I'm, I'm curious how the parish has evolved since in, the establishment in, in, of the church. In 1822, in 1822, basically this was a neighborhood of immigrants, mm -hmm. primarily Irish immigrants. Irish immigrants. And it was the Irish immigrants who, who in 1822 mm -hmm. wrote to the Bishop of New York over in Manhattan and asked that a priest be sent here and so the first Mass was celebrated here in 1822. At that time, of course, there were no bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, there were ferries, so right. the priest had to come by ferry and uh, celebrate Mass here. Was so, the neighborhood as populated as it is today, would you say? Oh, no, I think it's much more populated now, yeah. you know. But of course, we, you know, we have a lot of uh, businesses here, mm -hmm. back office operations. Uh, we have uh, schools, high schools, colleges, universities. They estimate about 35,000 students in this neighborhood. And then we also have housing. But we have housing for every, you might say, for uh, low income, middle income, and high income. Mm -hmm. And so our parish is composed of all these different levels of, of right. income. Uh, and also, it's a microcosm of the city in terms of, of race, of nationality, of language. It's, it's quite, a, quite a combination. So it's grown considerably. It has grown it in, the like. in the last several years because there are people moving into this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so it has, it has grown. You know, we've got young families now. And uh, so we have people who uh, have considerable experience as professionals, others who are working class. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite, a, um, quite a mixture of people. Do you get a lot of support from the neighborhood, from the areas yes. surrounding? Yeah, they're very, you know, Is if, it a community, if, if we have say? If we have special events, for example, like a concert, uh, uh, they're willing to advertise and, okay. and uh, help support the uh, the programs. You mentioned there was mm -hmm. a lot of events that take place here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, obviously liturgical events, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, concerts, lectures. So it's it's a center for it's a center a, for the community for a wide variety of uh, and for okay. the entire diocese as well.
This is the statue of St. James. Mm -hmm. He is the patron of the cathedral. As you know, he's also the patron of Spain. Of Spain. And the tradition is he's one of the 12 apostles and that he made his way to Spain to proclaim the gospel there mm -hmm. and died there, was buried there in Compostela, what is today Compostela. And Compostela is a, a, a destination for pilgrimages. Mm -hmm. You'll notice the scallop shell. What is the symbolism of that? I was it, it's, it's, it's connected with St. James, uh, and people today who complete the pilgrimage mm -hmm. get, a, get a replica of that, of that the shell. shell. Yeah, that shell, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, St. James is a favorite saint among uh, Haitians, also mm -hmm. a patron for many Haitians, and so uh, they come here to offer flowers and prayer intentions. Oh, okay. And then on July 25th, the Feast of St. James, the church is filled with uh, Haitians really? who come for the Mass because uh, they are so devoted to, to St. James, so he's very important for them. Well, I tell you what, while we're at the front yeah. of the church, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was hoping you could take me upstairs to look oh, at the yeah. organ, it's, if that's it's, okay. It's, oh, it's, it's a wonderful, that. it's a wonderful okay. organ. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Great. This is one of the newest additions to the cathedral, mm -hmm. 1981. Uh, this pipe organ was installed by a firm from New Jersey called Konzelman, and he continues to uh, watch over it to make sure that it, uh, it performs well. It's, it's massive. It's, and it's massive wonderful. Really it, it, it fills the church. Uh, oh, I'm sure. The acoustics must be great. They're I wonderful. Think. And uh, on special occasions, again, uh, when we have concerts, sometimes the, our music director just simply does an, an, an organ uh, concert. Mm. and, and uh, it just resonates throughout the whole church, and it's 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 a wonderful, wonderful uh, instrument. So we're very very proud of it, and uh, it's beautiful. and uh, so it, it it adds considerably to our liturgical experience. So it's it's. Cool. I noticed behind you, if I may comment on the um, camera. Oh yes. <laughs> Can you well, tell me what that is about? Yes. Well, we uh, every day at twelve ten, mm -hmm. the mass here is broadcast to people's homes, oh, and. Okay. Um, it's, re, it's shown again at 5.30. At uh, 12.10 it's live, at 5.30 then it's just on, on the tape. But it's a great service uh, mm -hmm. to uh, people in Brooklyn, Queens, but it's also shown in Manhattan and on Staten Island. I was in a CVS store uh, mm -hmm. not long ago, and a woman came up to me and she said, do I know you from, te do, do, do I know you from television? <laughs> I said, I said, maybe, and she said, I love your program. I love your. I don't think she was quite sure, but but anyway, it, it is this. Uh, I know uh, I have been stopped by people many times. That is great. You know, great. I've seen you. You know, doing the mass. Now, of course, other priests do it as well, not just myself. Right. Uh, so give everybody a break. There you go. But it's it's a great service, especially to the homebound, and we get we get lots of notes of appreciation, mm -hmm. and uh, people do uh, want to watch the mass. So it's it's a great service. Well, Monsignor, I can't thank you enough. This has been educational, entertaining. Well, Nick, I really I, appreciate good, it. Good. It's good to have you. Absolutely. Thank you. St. James Cathedral, what a great start. And that's just the start. The next stop of my day-long pilgrimage is St. Boniface. It's just a few minutes from here. I can't wait to discover its rich and spiritual history. So catch up with me next time as my journey through the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens continues. See you at St. Boniface. I think it's this way. <laughs> <laughs>